something that was really intriguing to me was the reaction to the Montreal Canadiens' 101st overall pick in the 2023 draft, Florian Jakai. Now, we had already made the video talking about how this guy was drafted, and we kind of went over the memes. We said it was funny. Oh, the Canadians drafted the younger brother of Arbor Jakai, Wi-Fi on the blue line. So this is going to be a cool little link there. But I did see a few people go out there and ruffle some feathers about this draft pick immediately afterwards. Hey, why would the Canadians draft this guy? He was an overage player. In his second year of draft eligibility, and last year, he had 25 points in 68 games in the OHL. This guy sucks! And I know that's really hyperbolic and rude to say about a 19-year-old, but this was a pretty common theme that I saw a lot of Canadians fans go out there and talk about when it comes to the draft picks made. As we remember, there were a lot of people freaking out, literally freaking out and raging over the Reinbacher pick. So saying that the Canadians took a guy who quote-unquote sucks isn't really too out of the realm of possibility in my mind. But I did see some people say, why did the Canadians draft a guy who has such few points and who didn't really have that great of a season in his draft plus one? They're really going the nepotism route here, eh? We're talking about Florian just because his last name is Jakai. But to that, I wanted to go out there and just kind of say my two cents before we really dive into this video topic. By the time the fourth round comes in the NHL draft, you kind of just take whoever. Nobody passed round three to go anywhere in the 100 to 150th to 200 something spots. None of the guys in that range that actually go in the draft are ever ranked to go in that spot in the draft period. I know we always like to say, oh, this guy was projected to go 45, but he went 65. So the team that picked him up at 65, yeah, great steal. You got a good one there. But that's just kind of evaluating off of arbitrary lists that don't really mean too much after you get past the first like 20 guys. The NHL draft has always just been about the preferences of the team's drafting, which is why you have some players that slip all the way to the seventh round that you think, yeah, why wasn't that guy taken in the fourth round? Wow, that guy should have been a lot higher. The fact is, you rarely get NHL players past round two anyway. So by the time rounds three, four, five, six, seven come around, you're just going to see teams take who they like. And sometimes teams like players that you don't necessarily agree with. So taking Florian Jakai, whether or not he had a good season or a bad season, I don't care. Like, I'm not going to get pissed off about a fourth round guy, you know? And I wanted to also use this video as an opportunity to talk about the Jakai connection itself. The Wi-Fi dual router setup that they got. And the reason we're talking about this is because of an article published on July 22nd by Stephen Ellis on DailyFaceOff.com. The Jakai brothers wear their hearts on their sleeves, on and off the ice. Stephen Ellis goes out there and writes about the Jakai brothers. He talks about Arbor Jakai and what Arbor's entire reaction was to seeing his younger brother get drafted by the Habs. Here it is. Arbor Jakai was in the middle of getting a haircut when his phone messages started to blow up. It was just after 12.30 p.m. on June 29th, 2023. For the Montreal Canadiens, Arbor Jakai was just a normal Thursday during the NHL offseason. And then his phone started to blow up. He had a new teammate his younger brother. With this, they are going to be teammates for the first time in their careers. I was sitting there getting my hair cut, and I told my barber that the draft was on and should put it on in case Florian got picked soon. So we turned the TV on, and it went to commercial, and my phone started buzzing. I couldn't grab it. Then it started buzzing again, and I thought it was weird. I looked at the TV, and I saw he got picked up by Montreal, and we all started freaking out. I just threw the towel off, and we started going nuts in there. It was a pretty special moment. Meanwhile, Florian was in a gym, practicing with a few of his Brantford Bulldogs teammates. His trainer had the laptop open, watching the draft, with a few players checking in every so often. My agent told me to keep my phone on me just in case, said Florian, who was passed over in 2022. I started doing the workout, and then I quickly got a call from my agent. He said, congrats, you just got selected by Montreal. It was surreal, and I did not know how to react. Now, it's interesting here that both of the Shakai brothers were just kind of out and about doing their own thing. Like, if you're going to get drafted into the NHL draft, you see prospects that are always there at the event, right? They're there with their families, they're dressed up in the suits. Sometimes, if you're a top prospect, you'll be closer to the draft floor. If you're not a top prospect, you'll be seated a little bit higher. 
But for Florian Jakai, as we had noted, he was already passed over last year. He played in the GOJHL, which is junior, I believe it's junior A in Ontario, was under a point per game there as a big dude, but because the Ontario Junior A scene definitely is not too scouted, nor is it really valued much in these NHL drafts, you didn't see this guy get drafted last year. And this previous season was not really the most impressive when it comes to straight up points, that it's understandable the idea that Florian Jakai might not have even been drafted in the 2023 draft. I think if he had gotten fully passed over for the 217 picks that there are in the NHL draft, or is it 224 now? I don't know what it is because now that Seattle is in the league, it's a little bit different. But if he did get passed over, I don't really know if anybody would have been surprised. This is also a strategy that the Canadians used in prior picks. You talk about guys in earlier drafts when Mark Bergevin was around, like Arsene Kisamutdinov, you've got Raphael Harvey Pinard. The Canadians drafting older guys that are closer to unrestricted free agency is a viable strategy when thinking about players that they want, but they don't want to extend immediate commitments to. The reason for this is because if you have a guy who is going to become a free agent in the next year or so, that guy's going to be a free agent, and you're going to have to sign him in order to get him onto your team. You're going to have to potentially outbid other teams, and he's going to have to choose you. It's an entire process. But if the guy's already an overage draftee player in the upcoming drafts, if you just drafted him instead, then all of a sudden, boom, you hold his rights for the next few years. He's not going to be a free agent able to sign with a whole bunch of other teams. He's only going to have the capacity to sign with you. And this is only going to happen on your call. If you don't like him after a few years, he could expire. He can go to actual UFA status again, and then you know your answer. Okay, this guy's now 21, 22. We don't really think he's that good, so we're not going to give a contract to him. His rights will expire, and he can go to some other team. There you go. It's all great. And so for Florian Jakai, if the Montreal Canadiens really just wanted to put their stake in the ground early, they wanted to say, okay, we don't want to wait until this guy becomes a free agent and we have to convince him to sign with us, we'll just draft him, we'll hold his rights for a few years, and then we can decide what to do later, it allows them to just be very cautious in regards to having this player in the system and being able to directly influence where he goes from here. Also, it makes a really great story. Hey, Arbor Shakai's younger brother got drafted by the Habs. The rest of this article goes out there and talks about the different Shakai stories, how Arbor Shakai became an NHL player, etc., etc. This is what Stephen Ellis writes about Florian. He's fresh off his first year with the Bulldogs. Like Arbor, Florian took some time to get noticed, playing in Junior B for a couple of years. The 6'2 forward brought a lot of that same tenacity and fire to his game that Arbor did, with his physical, pro-style game putting him on the radar of NHL scouts across the league. Like Arbor, scouts loved his willingness to put himself in front of the fire to make things happen, and his teammates appreciated that. And with that mindset of wanting to help out in any way possible, that extends way beyond the ice. And so with everything going the way it has, we still have to acknowledge that for a guy like Arbor, first and foremost, this guy was draft eligible in 2019, and back in 2019, he was at three points in 59 games. He really took some time in the Kitchener and Hamilton systems in the OHL before he actually became worthwhile of a young player to keep your eye on. He had signed with the Montreal Canadiens back in 2021, so before his last season in the OHL, he already impressed. Of course, there was the added benefit the Canadians took advantage of that Chakai did not play in the 2021 season. There was the entire pandemic which shut down the OHL. He was working at Costco. Everything fell into place from there. But Arbor Chakai is an NHL player, and you can't take that away from him. He's a bona fide NHL brute force out there, and his younger brother hopefully is looking to follow up in the same mold, and it starts out with the draft. So let me know your thoughts in the comments section below about Florian Jakai, Arbor Jakai's younger brother who had gotten drafted by the Montreal Canadiens. What are your thoughts about the entire philosophy of drafting this guy, even though he only had 20-something points? in 60 games in the OHL. The point production is not great, however, the intangibles are very much so, as is the story in general. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about this story, about the Canadians drafting him. Do you like the fact that they ended up doing this? Would you have preferred to see them draft somebody else in the fourth round? Because, I mean, look, there are so many players available throughout the entire draft, it's difficult to pinpoint one pick as being a problem. But thoughts in the comment section either way. I hope you enjoyed this video. The rest of the article is going to be linked in the description. It's written by Stephen Ellis. He does a great job. And 
Bye.